Me-262 jet fighters were sortied, performing various roles in World War II. Eventually, the German High Command shifted its role from a ground attack fighter bomber to a bomber interceptor. In this role, they engaged with the formation's fighter escorts. The intent of this video is to address the Me-262's vulnerabilities and shortcomings the Allies exploited during these fighter engagements and the jet's combat record against Allied fighters. The Germans fielded more Me-262s than any other jet model, as discussed in this March 1945 Declassified Air Intelligence Weekly Summary Document. Combat operations started in August 1944, and then Germans experimented flying various types of missions. Me-262s were sent on medium-altitude bombing missions, dive-and-glide low-altitude bombing missions, reconnaissance, and as interceptors. At the end of 1944, they shifted its role to less of a ground-attack fighter-bomber and more as a fighter. In this 1945 interview, Goering lamented the Me-262 usage role issues. While they waited for the development of the R-4M anti-aircraft air-to-air rocket, the Me-262 was armed with a 5cm anti-tank gun. This was a wasted use of the Me-262. This was done by the order of Hitler. He knew nothing about the German Air Force. He insisted the Me-262 be a bomber and called a bomber. There does not seem to be an Me-262 pilot issue, although their flying proficiency is suspect. Goering indicated pilot transition training from piston power to jet power is not an issue, and that the number of trained pilot outpaces the available jets. Me-262s need long runways for takeoff and special fuel facilities, which limit the airfields they can be stationed. Given this special airfield requirement, Allied fighters would camp out at their known bases and attack them while taking off for landing, like seen in this Allied fighter gun camera footage. Their greatest issue is their fast attack speed. The Germans struggled to find the best tactics to attack bombers and fighters. The maximum speed equated to 530 miles per hour, as seen in this 1945 U.S. Intelligence Committee document on German aircraft developments. This is 100 miles per hour faster than the Mustang's maximum speed of 430 miles per hour, and it has a faster rate of climb at 4,200 feet per minute versus the Mustang's at around 3,500 feet per minute. The Me-262s were armed with up to four Mk-108 30mm autocannons mounted in the fighter's nose section. These images show the German Mk-108 30mm autocannons and as installed in the Me-262's nose section, ammo belt linkages. This table lists characteristics of both German and Allied armaments from a 1945 Armaments in the Air War document. The German Mk-108 30mm autocannon row is here. It has a slower rate of fire, less ammo capacity, lower muzzle velocity than the U.S. Browning M250 caliber machine gun. However, it took four strikes to shoot down a heavy bomber or one to shoot down a fighter. This image shows the damage of a German Mk-108 30mm high explosive projectile can inflict on a wing and a Spitfire fuselage. At the war's end, the German Mk-108 ammo belt was an alternating mix of one high explosive and one incendiary, be they attacking fighters or bombers. This page from a 1985 U.S. Army Research Command document on technological innovations describes the Me-262's speed concern. Me-262 pilots found that high-speed attacks made accurate gunnery difficult, given the fast closing speeds. Slowing down for an accurate shot placement left them vulnerable to escort fighters and bomber gunners. The R-4M rocket somewhat mitigated the high-speed accuracy shot placement. The channel has covered the combat effectiveness of both Mk-108 cannons and the R-4M rocket rockets in these channels videos. This page from a 1945 8th Air Force tactical development document summarizes the Me-262's armament experience against fighters and bombers. The Mk-108 30mm autocannons were lethal against bombers, but no match against 50 caliber machine guns and a fighter versus fighter aerial engagement. The 50 caliber gun has a higher muzzle velocity, higher rate of fire, and more ammunition volume. The Me-262 30mm autocannons were designed to shoot down bombers, not fighters. The reason for the Me-262's long runway is discussed on this page. The wing loading of the Me-262 is considered high at 53 to 61 pounds per square foot. The jet will take off and land at higher speeds, which implies a longer runway. For comparison, the Mustang's wing loading is around 40 pounds per square foot. The jet is also less maneuverable. Although it is a well-designed high-speed fighter bomber, its aileron is of poor design. The engines are designed to aid in manufacturing, but the materials used are of poor quality. 
its high wing loading constrains its maneuverability and it would be deficient in matching maneuvers in aerial engagements with a lower wing loaded fighter. It can outspeed any propeller fighter in level flight or in a dive. It does not have acceleration ability. If caught at low altitude and at low speed, it will be an easy target for a propeller fitted fighter. Deficiencies of the fighter are discussed on this page. The information was provided by a Luxembourg national who befriended German test pilot Fritz Wendell, an image of test pilot Fritz Wendell with Willy Messerschmitt. It takes a while for the engine throttle response to translate into speed. A minute or two will pass for the fighter to achieve its maximum speed. Efforts to accelerate the process will cause the engine to flame out. The throttles need to be nursed to full power. Runway lengths need to be at least 1,500 meters, and the Lischfeld airfield was lengthened to 2,000 meters. Lischfeld is around 50 miles west of Munich, Germany, as seen on this map from a World War II map atlas document. This ME-262 was caught in the crosshairs of an Allied fighter at low altitude and at low speed. It cannot dive to get away since it's already at a low altitude. It cannot turn inside the Mustang to get away. It can firewall the throttles to an escape speed, but the 1-2 to two minute lag time duration during thrust spool up will make it a sitting duck during the acceleration lag. In RAF trials, the ME-262 was clocked 70 to 80 miles per hour faster than the Tempest and Spitfire and 50 miles per hour faster than the Meteor. The ME-262 could get away by a half roll and dive or simply outclimb the RAF aircraft. The ME-262 has not been an effective fighter aircraft. However, it does excel as a high-speed ground attack bomber. The ME-262s participated in mock air-to-air -air combat engagements with ME-109s in March and April 1944. These evaluations were attended by the Minister of German Armaments and Munitions, Speer, and Field Marshal Kesselring. The ME-262 was claimed superior in battle in shooting down the ME-109s. It maximized its speed during the attack and adopted tactics such that its wide turn radius was not a handicap. The jet would attack a fighter from behind, passing above the prey so fast that it would not have time to track and provide any return fire. It could then maneuver in a wide turn when outside the range of the fighter's guns. This tactic could be repeated. In December 1944, General Arnold outlined the perceived threat from jet attacks. The threat to bombers is serious. However, it can be countered by overwhelming the jets with a protective layer of bomber escorts. The threat to fighters is not serious since fighters can outmaneuver the jets if they know they are under attack. Jets are at a disadvantage when dogfighting a U.S. fighter. This page lists guidance if your fighter is under ME-262 attack. If over altitudes of 15,000 feet, execute a half roll, throttle back, and dive steeply. ME-262s are not equipped with dive brakes and are limited to dive angles below 30 degrees without excessive speed. It won't be able to stay on your tail if your dive angle exceeds 30 degrees, like in this image. The ME-262 will likely lose a fighter in the dive chase, being unable to continuously track the fighter during the descent. If he is tracking you at ground level, hold into a steep turn. He won't be able to turn inside you to get a shot. ME-262's fuel consumption increases at low altitudes. He will likely break off the attack. RAF observations from ME-262 encounters include these four points. ME-262s do not have dive brakes. He will attain excessive speeds in a shallow dive. He cannot outturn an Allied fighter. Low altitude fuel consumption is high at sea level. If caught with an ME-262 on your tail, he can be shaken by climbing turns or steep turns. So how did Allied fighters perform against ME-262s in combat? ME-262 fanboys should sit down or tune out for the data presented next. Eighth Air Force fighters claim to have shot down 130 ME-262s in aerial combat from a 1945 Eighth Air Force Operation Summary document. ME-262s were credited in shooting down only 10 Eighth Air Force Allied fighters for a claimed Allied aerial kill ratio of 13 to 1. The first Eighth Air Force encounter occurred on July 28, 1945. Goering was asked if the ME-262 could have won the war for Germany. His response was it could have if the war continued another four to five months. Five or six thousand jets could have made the difference. Goering, though, had a reputation for embellishment. In summary, Allied fighters exploited the vulnerabilities of the ME-262. This included its inability to dive beyond angles of 30 degrees, a wide turning radius at any altitude, slow acceleration, couple minutes to reach maximum speed, targeting the airfields where the jets were stationed.
The jet's closing speed made accurate gunnery difficult. The number of Allied fighters overwhelmed the number of ME-262s. Allied fighter armaments were optimized for fighter engagements, whereas the ME-262s were optimized for bomber engagements, not fighters. If you've enjoyed this Allied fighter versus ME-262 jet combat tactics deep dive review, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.